This is Cameron Chai bringing another episode of Azo TV and today we're on site at Micro Materials speaking to Denise Hoban who's going to tell us about their Nanotest Vantage system. Hi Cameron, so this is the Nanotest Vantage which we released onto the market last year in June 2011. Um, this whole instrument, this is the environmental cabinet it sits in and the instrument itself is in here. Um, it's quite complex. So what we have and what I'd like to show you next door is we have a deconstructed version of this which is a complete instrument. Um, so we can go and have a look at that and I can point out everything in a bit more detail. Right, so we look at the different measurement stations now on the instrument. We have five separate positions that we can position the sample in front of on this instrument. So working from the front to the back, uh, firstly here we have a small single objective microscope which works throughout the range of temperatures from room temperature to our maximum operating temperature of 750 degrees. This allows you to visualize the sample and place your indents very, in a very targeted way. So then just next to that is the um, this is the nano loading head. So the load range on that is from 10 micronewton up to 500 millinewton. So that's a very nice wide range on one loading head. Moving then, um, moving next, we have the AFM. So this allows 3D uh, visualization profiling of your sample surface pre and post indentation or scratch or impact. Next to this then is the microtest loading head. This loading head has a load range of 300 millinewton right up to 20 newton. So that's again a very, very wide range. So on one instrument you can go right from 10 micronewton straight up to 20 uh, newton. And then the last measurement station is this multiple objective microscope where you can um, position your sample under a range of magnifications. Maximum magnification on that is above 3000. So even the very, very fine structures, you can line your sample up in front of the um, lens and then move automatically to the nano or micro measurement position. Okay, so coming back to the front. <coughs> so the sample, the sam this is where the sample is mounted. So the samples are mounted at the front of the sample stub and it's all mounted on a transfer stage. So the sample does all the movement. All the measurement stations are permanently fixed and the sample moves between the measurement stations automatically as controlled by the software. So this is coarse positioning in Y and then we have a nano positioning stage which allows repositioning of the sample with an accuracy of three nanometers. So that's very, very good for very fine structures. Again, composite materials where you want to hit specific structures. Um, other bits of interest, we have a little side view camera which allows you to visualise contact when the indenter comes in contact with the sample. Um, now this instrument here, I can tell by looking at it, it's configured for nano indentation, nano impact, which is this solenoid uh, construction at the bottom, and also nano scratch. So nano indentation is for measurement of hardness, modulus, creep properties. Nano impact allows a very high strain rate test to be carried out um, in both single impact to look at dynamic hardness and repetitive impact to look at fracture and fatigue mechanisms. And then with nano scratch, we scratch the sample across the face of the indenter. The sample will move up and down to look at critical loads and loads to failure. Now this particular instrument is set up for um, purging experiments. Now this instrument um, can very easily be configured for high temperature measurements. So all we do is fit a high temperature shield and a hot block on the sample side. So there is another instrument next door that I can show you that's set up for high temperature. But above about, well it depends on the material you're testing, but as you go through the temperature range, particularly above 400 degrees, oxidation begin, uh, begins to be a problem. So we put the instrument in this perspex chamber. Now the front is missing off this just so we could see better. But we can control the oxygen in here by um, purging and then backfilling with argon or nitrogen. So there's a little oxygen sensor here which allows us to read the oxygen levels in the cabinet. And this allows us to do high temperature measurements on even something um, like carbides which are you know, oxidised very, very quickly under temperature. So that allows you to do um, long duration high temperature measurements without 
the effects of any oxidation layer. So that's the instrument in a nutshell. Um, all of that sits on an anti-vibration table. Um, so the instrument is isolated in terms of um, acoustic noise and environmental noise and also in terms of in terms of temperature the temperature inside this cabinet is controlled very very closely so typically on the instruments it would have one of those big cabinets on the outside so all we're seeing here is the instrument without that cabinet okay part of the, the instrument construction is all that granite yes bases there why, why is it that you use granite well granite is extremely stiff and in, in any system like this you need a very stiff system the compliance of the instrument has to be uh, minimal um, and also the granite base has a very high thermal mass so we don't see a lot of expansion and contraction with any kind of tiny fluctuations in temperature so that's very very important the weight it gives more or less anchors the system um, and it's very nice um, to work with so because we mount so many different things on our instrument it's a multifunction instrument we have to have room for lots of different things and we, we find the, this material very easy to work with actually. And what's, what's the maximum temperature range the instrument can work through? So we can currently go up to 750 degrees C and we can go down to minus 20 degrees. So we've got a full range there so applications anything from um, you know rubber manufacturing for tires in very cold climates right through to aerospace materials TBCs things like this that experience very extreme temperatures we can cover that entire range and then there's a whole range of materials in between that will like cutting tools automotive coatings that need high but not very high so maybe 400 degrees or something like this and um, also polymer materials which will have a glass transition temperature but about 100 degrees or slightly higher so with the temperature range that we have you can look at the mechanical properties of all of those materials right through the useful range Okay, and what advantage does it have, or is, is there for users to, to be able to do it at, at these elevated temperatures compared to other instruments that can only work at ambient temperatures? Well, anybody who looks at our instrument always thinks it's a little bit strange, a little bit different. We indent on the horizontal plane. Every other instrument available uh, indents like this, which makes it very difficult to do high temperature measurements because the temperature, the convection currents will, you know, they're more difficult to control. Whereas when we're working on this horizontal plane, um, it's much easier to achieve stability. So as far as I know, um, we're the only manufacturer um, that can do the range that we can do. And I've proven that through, we've got about 50 different publications now above 500 degrees from our customers around the world. So independent publications. So we're very much at the forefront of this. Um, the high temperature testing, really about I'd say about 60% of all the instruments now that we're selling a high temperature on them and those that don't it's because it's budget restricted and people want to add it in the future because they can see that this is the way things are going people have been doing nano indentation at room temperature for years 20 30 years now so in order to the, the, the big move now is to look at materials under true service conditions so going through the range of strain rates so it's not just the temperature but it's being able to control the high strain rate stuff and also to be able to control the temperature and that gives you a more realistic view of how your material is going to behave in an in-service environment there's no point knowing your material in laboratory conditions if it's going to go out into the field and work at temperature or high strain rate or humidity or in liquids I haven't mentioned any of those but we can do all of those things um, so that's extremely important it's, it's bringing research to a more it's more alive it's more realistic really um, and the beauty of, of this instrument is that because it does things so differently um, our users have a very very high rate of publication because they're not doing work that somebody else has already done there is so much to do in this field we can't possibly do it all here and the users that we have can't possibly do it all so um, that's good news for any prospective users because they're doing something different an instrument that's been set up specifically for hot stage measurements this instrument here can work at temperatures up to 750 degrees so I can point out the hardware that we use first of all it's in the purge box same as the one we saw earlier um, here on the right hand side this is the sample stage and you can't really see it very well but the sample is just mounted in there and the indenter is on the left hand side with its own separate heating system and both of those are controlled um, separately and matched so that when contact is made at high temperature and um, there's isothermal contact so you don't have any drift across that system whatsoever so you'd mount it like this and then you can slide 
this kind of cover over which creates a it really kind of cuts down the testing time it helps um, stability achieve stability quicker so we're at the stage now where these measurements to us you know are very easy to do but what we're trying to do is to make them quicker and easier to do for our customers so on the left then we have this is a little heat shield which just is extra kind of insurance against any heat effects on the loading train and because this instrument works up to 750 degrees we water cool that heat shield the instruments that only go to 500 degrees you don't need the water cooling it's just the, the shield to block any radiation off the sample onto the loading head so it's a very simple um, setup but very very effective what we do is we heat the indenture we heat the sample they're both PID controlled and then we lock one side and bring them into contact so you've got constant feedback and uh, maintenance of temperature on the sample side and then the indented temperature is locked um, that's a patented micromaterials technique that patent was granted last year and um, so it's a very very efficient way and ensures stability which is absolutely key when we're doing measurements like this on this scale absolutely key so if anybody's bought an instrument that doesn't have the high temperature capability they can they can retrofit that to the instrument if they have one of ours yeah. yes yes <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We sell this because we sell predominantly to the university and research sectors. Um, people are reasonably budget restricted most of the time. So if you can't afford everything you want, we've made the instrument so it's upgradable. So you can start in year one with just a room temperature nano indentation instrument. Then if you, as you get more money, you can add temperature, you can add scratch, you can add impact, humidity control and um, the 3D profiling anything you wish so you can really take this from a starter instrument and, and that's all that some people need is a starter instrument so there's no point buying lots of stuff that you, you're not sure you need but the beauty is that this instrument can grow with you as your research changes the instrument can change with you you do not know ha have to go out and buy a separate instrument to do scratch you can just add a scratch component to this instrument so the long-term cost of this instrument is actually very low um, at the, they, they tend to last, which from a sales point of view isn't, isn't great for me, but um, we've got instruments out there that are 16, 18 years old and they're still going. So these instruments are built to last and, uh, and they really do. All right, Denise, and if anyone wants more information about the Nanotest Vantage System, they can find that on your website? Absolutely. So our website um, features more information on the system and information on all of our global representatives around the world. And the web address is? www.micromaterials.co.uk Alright Denise, thanks for taking a few minutes to tell us about the Nanotest Magic System. Thank you Cameron.